Okay, all right, section 5.2, mass calculations for chemical reactions. We're going to go ahead and get cracking on this, and uh, I think we're going to work through two practice problems. So mass calculations use molar mass. The key distinction um, is that whenever we are looking at reacting ratios, we're looking at molar ratios of substances, not mass ratios to one another. You use molar mass to convert masses to moles and vice versa. So if we look at this problem right here, calculate the mass of chlorine gas or chlorine in grams that can be produced by the electrolysis of 50 grams of sodium chloride in concentrated aqueous solution. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to look at our equation, confirm that it's balanced. Two moles of NaCl, two moles of H2O, produce two moles of NaOH, Cl2, and H2. Okay, do our hydrogens match up? Yep, we got two here, two here, that's four, we got four there. We got two oxygens, there's two oxygens. We've got chlorine, and you can see the little dots that are populating above the, the substances. Excuse me. We've got two chlorine, lo and behold, two more chlorine, two sodium, two sodium. We're balanced. Okay, great. Now, what we need to do is look at this equation and say it's giving us moles to moles. So if you have two moles of NaCl and two moles of H2O, you're going to get one mole of Cl2, two moles of NaOH, and one mole of H2. Now, does it say anything about grams? Does it say, oh, if you have two grams of NaCl and two grams of H2O? No, it doesn't. And that's what that last slide was getting at. It was getting at, you have to go from grams to molar mass to moles. Then you can relate moles to moles. And then those moles can be related to your mm or your molar mass, and that can be related to grams. Okay, so the way that we're going to set this up is we're going to look at this and say, calculate the mass of chlorine. That's what we're curious about. We're curious about the chlorine. And what we are going to do is we're basically only going to use this information right here and this right here. Because this gives us no information about any of the other components. It doesn't tell us about the amount of H2O or sodium hydroxide or anything like that. So we can assume that there is excess H2O. And I say excess, what you can also look at it as is it gives you the exact right amount that you need. No more, no less. Okay. So we're going to set up 50.0 grams of NaCl. And we're going to do a balanced chemical equation, or sorry, a, a dimensional analysis problem. Now I'm going to pause because what I wanted to do was figure out that it's about 58 0.5 grams of NaCl is one mole NaCl. And what I want you to see right here is I've taken the mass that I've been provided with and converted it effectively into the moles of NaCl. And so once I have the moles of NaCl, I can relate the moles of NaCl based on what's in my given chemical uh, or balanced chemical reaction. Two moles of NaCl will produce one mole of Cl2. Now, let's go back and confirm this. Our question asks for the mass of chlorine in grams. So, well, let me rewrite this a little bit, erase these. Uh, one mole of Cl2, and I'm gonna say one mole of Cl2 has a mass of, that would be about 70.9 grams of Cl2. Okay, so if we want to, I'm just going to switch colors on my pen here. So grams of NaCl are going to cancel. Moles of NaCl are going to cancel. Moles of Cl2 are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with exactly what I want, 70.9 grams of Cl2 or sorry, grams of Cl2 are the units that I'm left with. So I'm going to do 50 times 70.9 divided by 58.5 times 2. And I get, well, uh, 
where's my cursor? There we are. 30.3 grams of Cl2. And that's all there is to that. Now, to visualize what we did, we took basically the simple flowchart where we had a mass of a substance, NaCl in our case, that we converted to moles of a substance. Then we used our balanced chemical equation to get the moles of our other substance. And then from the moles of our other substance, we were able to produce, or sorry, the moles of our other substance plus the molar mass, we were able to ultimately get our mass of our other substance, which in this case was our Cl2. So here's kind of a nice schematic of exactly what we did. Grams of NaCl use the molar mass to convert to moles of NaCl. We used our balanced chemical equation to get our moles of Cl2, used the molar mass of Cl2 to get the grams of Cl2. That's all there was to it. Effectively, there were three conversions. And you know how to do each one of those conversions. It was just a matter of packaging it all together. Okay, so here's, the, so here's our next problem. We've got the number of moles of SO2 gas required to prepare 50 metric tons of liquid H2SO4. One metric ton is 1 times 10 to the 6th grams. Okay, so we've got a couple of things going on here. We need to calculate the number of moles of SO2 required. So moles of this to produce, well, a mass of this. Okay, so what we do know is that if we have two moles of SO2, we'll produce two moles of H2SO4. By the looks of it, what we need to do first off is we need to take this units of 50 metric tons and convert that into units that arguably we care about. And this is a little bit awkward because of the fact that we're starting with a product and working backwards. But this 50 metric tons is something that we need to take care of. One metric ton is 1 times 10 to the 6th grams. Okay. Now, what I need to do with this is I need to convert this. I need to get grams out of the, or I need to get the molar mass of my H2SO4. So what we've got is a mass of 98.036 grams of H2SO4 is the molar mass of one mole of H2SO4. Okay, so now that we've gotten that converted, well, we're a lot closer to solving our problem. Because what was our question? Our question was, what's the number of moles of SO2 gas? Well, we have a molar ratio based on our chemical equation that says two moles of H2SO4 will produce two moles of SO2. And the way that I always like to think about dimensional analysis problems is where I start, the units with which I start, well, that's given to me in the problem. And the question that's being asked of like, what, what is the substance? What is the amount? Blah, 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 blah. That's where I'm going to end. This is my end. This is my start. Okay. So I'm ending with moles of SO2. Does it matter that it says two moles of SO2? It really doesn't because that's our ratio from our balanced chemical reaction. So if I just said equals, what would my units be? They'd be moles of SO2, exactly what I want them to be. Does it matter that I didn't include H2O or O2 at all? It really doesn't. Okay, so now what I'll do is 50 times one times 10 to the sixth times two divided by 98.0 ooh, ooh, rats. Okay, so 50 times 1.6 or uh, 50 times one times 10 to the sixth times two divided by parentheses 98.036 times two 
equals 5100. Oh, I went too far with my zeros there. Delete that, erase that. No, the same color. I think this is the same color. Uh, 16.7285 is what I got there. And I know that I have three sig figs with which to work, so I'm going to rewrite this as 5.10 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 10 to the 5th moles. SO2. All right. Well, that wraps it up. I hope this is helpful, and we'll forge ahead in the next video.